the um, by having to by be called occasion. into action twice in in less than 30 seconds, and uh, the ball goes out of play now. It's with Geelong, back with Geelong. And here we go, intercepted by Andrew Savinsky. 25 metres out, Savinsky twists, turns, right foot shot, takes a deflection. Then again, Jimmy Johnson went at the goal. Then the key to just open the lead for North Geelong Warriors. Savinsky's shot was initially blocked. The Ginchuch was unmarked, ball fell to him, and Ignosti was well out of his area. The Ginchuch's first goal at Toronto will be the easiest Geelong ever tied the cup goal ever score. But the young kid refused to freeze when given the opportunity, and it's North Geelong 1. Geelong nil. Well, it might have been an easy tap-in, but I tell you what, the significance of that goal, and especially on the young 16-year-old shoulders of young Daniel Dragicic, are, are going is very, very significant. Just North Geelong won, Geelong nil. We've got about five or six minutes at best in this first half. We've got our first flare of the afternoon as well. Off in the distance, we see that lovely orange smoke that us European football supporters so crave. But the, the, the key thing there was it was scored after the 35th minute. Minute. During this tournament, no half goes over 35 minutes, so we've seen a silly error in the Geelong defence. Put that down to tiredness, if you like. It may well be the case. They played on Friday. They've never played a 45-minute half so far this season. And just after that period, all of a sudden, they're making a mistake that they haven't made so far during the tournament. Volkovsky now in the middle of the park. This could be Geelong's last attempt for this first half. Dispossessed by Mia Trubkovic, who holds the ball up beautifully. He finds Grigosharic. Grigosharic now has got the ball. And it's going to be half-time. That's all he's going to do with the uh, leather, with the white ball. One. Nil at half time, North Geelong won, Geelong nil, and I tell you, the last five, ten minutes of that half was absolutely played at a frenetic pace, and it certainly shaped the second half shapes up to be an absolute humdinger of an, of an affair. Out here at Alco Pass, as Mel Bosniak blows his whistle to signify the start of the second half. If they start now um, just going off the boil a little and just laps, having these frequent lapses of concentration like they have had in the opening eight or nine minutes of this half, well, there could be problems. Now the ball, all the action's up the other end. Daniel Dragicic has the ball. Just Tricky the play. Excellent punt. Gets past Vetkovsky. Back to Savinsky. Got an opportunity to shoot. Muddle up between the play. Savinsky back out to Trukovic. Into the area. Goal! Mio Trukovic rewards the best day for our performance with the Warriors' second goal. And he wants to celebrate with the Warrior fans on the ground. Well, it's a fantastic goal there by Leo Kukovic. The crowd has gone absolutely ballistic here. The players are being lit up on the opposite terrace there. There's a the fans in the grandstand are starting to see the starting to cheer. They can sense that the two thousand miles along the top is going to stay here at at at, at Elko Park. And Rollo, we have Rollo down on the on the boundary line. Rollo. Yes, the Geelong crowd absolute went mad. They absolutely loved that crowd. And David Savinsky could not help but smile. Let's hope the smile will stay there. Geelong soon led up against... Words of the Master, Sam Bishop, Geelong advertiser, leading journalist. Thanks, Sammy. Thanks, Sammy. The ball uh, goes on with Boris Levan getting beat by Tom Uttle. Slow, Petr Storczewski in late. One, two with Arce Boras. Ball gets forced forward. Set Kosti again, cool in defence, plays the ball back to Adagnostu. And Geelong will restart their, most, their latest offence with Adagnostu's long left foot clearance. But only as far as Sarek, who's done this all evening, plays the ball calmly back to Dave Zivinski, who's got more time than a switch, Swiss watch maker. I tell you what, we've got midway through this second half. North Geelong are leading convincingly. 2 0. Savitsky got time into the area. Shot. Yes, that's it. Yeah. That's the third. Adrian Savitsky did it in the most nonchalant fashion. Led back, picked his spot, hit a turn, Ignostu's right, and that was never going anywhere else but the back of the net. Rollo, you there, Rollo? I was right behind that one, Tonchi. If it had come through the net, would have landed in my nap, and I tell you what, the most disappointed man in the field right now is number one in the box, Mr. An Angus Nutu. He is not happy at all as the flares go off Rolo. and the North Geelong boys score. Rolo, you're not going to streak onto the field and get a, a, a word from Anthony as agnostic now, are you? <laughs> I don't think he talked to me right at the moment, Dodgy. No. Uh, what's, the, what's the atmosphere like out on the uh, terraces? It's, it's just dynamic. It's so much colour. The North fans are starting to sing. There's flares being let off. And my home, as Bill Laurie said, it is all happening here at Elko Park. And ball falls, that man, Trubbick, has been an inspiration. O'Sullivan now fouled by Petcher. 
Referee Mel Bosniak blows his whistle to signify it's going to be a free kick to the red, white and blues on North Geelong and it's going to be taken duly by Mio Trukovic. By far, in my opinion, Johnny, my humble opinion, the man of the match so far. Ah, certainly been an uh, inspiring presence oh, it's in the Dave Savinsky, field. Dave Savinsky goes for a shot! Oh! Why? side for David Savinsky to run onto and my word did the old veteran leave the best till last with that goal what a fabulous goal that was he struck it with his right peg it went rocketing into into Anthony Anagnostu's right right top right hand corner net no, and it is celebration time here the fireworks are going off the Chinese New Year was about a week but I tell you what for North Geelong their year starts tonight and the celebrations at the Lammies nightclub tonight is going to be oh so exciting indeed 4-0 to North Geelong and we've got about five minutes to go of this 2005 Geelong Advertiser Cup no, final what 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 and uh, now we're, we've gone now 47 minutes, 47 minutes into the uh, second half. We're entering stoppage time, and uh, we've got all sorts of dramas happening on the uh, uh, opposition bench here. Not, they're not happy at all. They've been reduced down to 10 men, and I can tell you that the Geelong faithful, who are right in front of us, they're being very, very hostile, very, very hostile to both the referee Mel Bosniak, and it's a penalty. It's going to be a penalty to um, Geelong. To, um, it's going to be taken by Rostevsky. Who misses it? Who misses it? My word, it just is not their day. It's not the Red and Black's day, unfortunately. But um, they've, had a, they've had a penalty awarded to them late in the game. I mean, it's probably the last action of the day. And unfortunately, they could have made the score for one. They haven't made it, so it's going to be 4-0. It remains 4-0 with uh, North Geelong now looking to uh, take the crown, looking to take the title. And there it is. For the third year running, North Geelong are the champions of the Geelong Advertiser Cup. The final one in its current format, the final one to be known as the Geelong Advertiser. And after this, we'll come back to soak up some of the uh, post-match festivities, the atmosphere here at Alco Park with uh, the presentation about to be made. And then we'll go through a little bit of a post-match analysis and we'll wrap it up for what has truly been a memorable Geelong Advertiser Cup 2005 edition. Over to you, studio.